Hello everyone, this is Isotype Switching channel and let's talk about some medical history. Archaeology reveals early surgical interventions. Evidence from skulls proves that trepanning was practiced at least as early as 10,000 BC. Operators, they may have been shamans, used stone cutting tools to extract portions of the cranium to ease pressure created by depressed skull fracture, or to deliver sufferers from some tormenting devil that had taken possession of the soul. Bone setting and amputations were performed from early times. Although these involved severe risks of hemorrhage, infection, and shock. Egyptian medical papyri dating from the second millennium BC refer to surgical procedures for abscesses and minor tumors, as well as disorders of the eye, ear, and teeth. The Hippocratic writings produced in Greece in the 5th and 4th centuries BC contain much that relates to surgery, including a treatise on wounds or the ulceribus and another on head injuries or the capitus vulneribus. In the latter, five different types of injury are recognized and trepanning is described. Fractures are to be treated by reduction and immobilization with splints and bandages. The knife is to be used for excising nasal polyps and ulcerated tonsils, and cautery is recommended for hemorrhoids. In general, however, the picture that emerges is conservative. Amputation of gangrenous tissue is accepted as a last report. Catheterization is advocated for bladder stones. The removal of stones or lithotomy is to be left to such as our craftsmen therein. Vascular ligature was apparently unknown to the Greeks. Hippocratic recommendations for the treatment of wounds proved influential for centuries. The theory was that suppuration was indispensable for healing to take place because it was believed that pus derived from vitiated blood. This formed the basis for the latter influential doctrine of laudable pus. The Hippocratic Oath stated that Physicians should leave surgical interventions to others. This separation formed part of a medical division of labor, but surgery was also clearly viewed as an inferior trait, it being the work of the hand rather than the head. This is reflected in its name. The word surgery derives from the Latin chirurgia, which comes from the Greek chairos and ergon which both mean hand and work. Certain Greek physicians paid attention to surgery. Soranus of Ephesus wrote extensively on obstetrics, discussing the use of the birthing chair and giving instructions for difficult birth positions. Where the fetus was in a transverse position, for instance, he performed a procedure that was later called turning the foot or podalic version, easing a hand into the womb and pulling down a leg so that the baby would be born feet first. New operations gradually appeared in the literature. In the first century AD, Celsus gave the first full account of lithotomy. surgery in India seems to have been conservative, although at an ancient date healers were couching for cataract and Ayurvedic healers developed exquisite skills in cosmetic surgery, especially remodeling noses or rhinoplasty. 
they would cut a leaf-shaped flap of skin from the forehead, making sure that the end nearest the bridge of the nose remained attached. And they pioneered a method of lithotomy, not introduced into Europe until the 16th century AD. The most important compilation of Indian surgery was known as Sosrata Samhita, after Sosrata its author. Its composition may be coterminous with the heyday of Greek medicine. Amongst other things, the work lists some 121 different surgical instruments, including scissors, needles, lancets, catheters, tweezers, trocars, knives, and magnets for removing metal objects. Early Chinese surgery for its part developed the technique known as moxibustion, in which a small quantity of combustible plant material was placed on the skin and set alight, causing a painful burn blister designed to serve as a counter irritant. Traditional surgery was performed by regular barber surgeons, for whom hair cutting and shaving provided a solid day-to-day -day income. It was also undertaken by itinerants, often called quacks, specializing in one particular and often intricate or hazardous operation. Up to the 19th century, there were itinerant tooth drawers, precursor of modern dentists traveling oculists would couch for cataract, and lithotomists removed bladder stones. Surgical treatment of hernia was likewise long in the hands of such empirics, regular science surgeons might be loath to handle hernia in view of the almost inevitable castration that accompanied. Itinerant hernia masters were active until the 18th century.